A new death army has arrived in the mortal realms and there's a few kits to go with it. So today we'll be doing probably our biggest unboxing as we have a look at this massive pile of boxes in front of us. So yeah, we really had to start with the big fella though. Cat across the Mortark of the Necropolis. This guy pretty much sold the army to me with how awesome he looks. I know a few people have said he looks a bit like the uh, engineers from Prometheus. I quite like the blend of different uh, historical uh, aesthetic. So you've got kind of oriental influences and all sorts going on in there, which looks really good. So yeah, we're going to crack this open and have a look at the sprues and see what you get inside this fairly hefty box. This is probably the biggest kit in the range and for good reason there's your big centerpiece model who is going to lead your army and uh, yeah his rules are really good as well he's kind of a force multiplier he's got lots of awesome buffs and a really interesting war scroll where um, as he takes more damage he kind of loses some of the core buffs that he's got but he himself gets stronger so I think it was described on uh, one of the preview videos, it's kind of like a boss character in a video game where all his advisors will drop down and then, uh, yeah, on his bottom tier, he gets a load of attacks with his uh, really, really good weapons. So yeah, really interested to um, see how this guy performs on the battlefield. Definitely one of the, uh, the prettiest models that uh, Games Workshop have done in a long time. Uh, interestingly, all the different kind of attendants do build separately, so I am kind of wondering how easy it is to magnetise this so you can remove them during the game. But yeah, let's have a look at the sprues and see what this guy looks like. So yeah, kind of main thing that you see straight away is that massive kind of uh, scenic bit for the base. It's kind of like a... A little bit like the Forge World dioramas that you see for a lot of the um, Horus Heresy range. And it's really nice to see this kind of thing in the um, in the Citadel line. I mean, I can see a lot of people stealing bits from this kit to make little dioramas and stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm sure we will see a fair few of these on Heavy Metal. I don't know if you can make that out, but there's actually some like hieroglyphic script on the little scroll that the guy's hand holding up. I mean that's a really nice touch. So yeah it's smaller kit than I thought it would be. It's only two frames. I mean obviously the bulk of it is that massive piece of rock that he's standing on. But uh, yeah I mean the details cracking. And check out that shield. It's really nice. Yep so that is Cat Across the, uh, the Mortark. Uh, he's about 500 points, but I would definitely be including this guy in the army. Next up we've got one of the other kind of centerpiece models and again, really, really cool looking kits that kind of just inspired me to start collecting these. And that's the Mortec Crawler. So obviously this has got a very uh, screaming school catapult vibe, but kind of uh, put through an Age of Sigmar lens with its little legs and uh, yeah, it's really, really cool. So let's open this one up and see what we get inside. So is ever really um, clear instruction manual showing you how to put this together and it's worth noting you can build it in one of two ways either with the, uh, the arm ready to fire or already firing and uh, I think I may put two of these in my army because they look really cool as well. I think the problem with the Bone Reapers uh, army is I love all the kits it's going to be really hard to kind of choose what needs to go in the list. So let's have a look at the frames. Again it's a smaller kit than I imagined with kind of one big frame, one little frame and then what looks like a knight base. Yeah I think that's the same size as a knight. So quite a big kit um, but not that many pieces in comparison to what I thought. I suppose a lot of them are, are big single pieces for the, the body of the um, siege engine and the catapult. And then again the kind of side supports take up most of the frame there. But there's some really cool details like the little hamster wheel that the uh, the loader runs around in to move the arm to position. And then yeah some really cool details all the little 
cartouches and little weird legs. We kind of like these weird little details that are on the, the Bone Reaper stuff. Like even the basic uh, skeleton guys are, are really cool. And again, they're different. They're not, you know, they're not risen skeletons. These guys are all crafted, so they can afford to be a bit more stylistic with them, which is really cool. Makes them different than the other undead kits. But yeah, I really like this one. And I think we'll see a lot of these on the battlefield because they are fairly scary. Next up, we've got the Guthazar Harvester. So this is an interesting thing. It's kind of an offensive monster, but it has like a support role as well where it can bring dead guys back. And again, it's really good. <laughs> Another hard thing is going to be trying to juggle your behemoths in this because I kind of want some harvesters and some catapults. This guy next to a big block of Mortec Guard is going to make it really hard to shift them as they'll just keep coming back when they die. Um, smaller box than I thought it would be and I think it's quite a small kit in comparison to the other two that we've looked at. Let's see what we get inside. So base size is quite small really. I think it's similar to the Lord on Dracoline maybe, that kind of size. And it is two frames. Again, some really nice stuff on here. So if you look at the kind of like side there and the detail and again and all the panels it's you know elements that we've seen from some of the um, the Morgaths and, and stuff like that and there's you know nods to Kemri and stuff but it's not overtly uh, Tomb Kings which I like that they're their own kind of thing. I mean there's loads of really cool stuff you could do some conversion work with. Um, looking at this, Chris Peach recently on the Twitch stream did some converted man-eaters and you could do a cracking man-eater, Ossiarch, ogre dude with some of these bits on here. In fact, yeah, that'd go together really nicely. Uh, and on the other frame, we've kind of got the body of the beast itself, which is really cool. I'll have a quick flick through the instructions just to show you how this goes together. Um, yeah, I mean they don't look too too bad to put together. There's a few spindly bits on this one with the little weird arms and stuff that come out of it. That might be a bit tricky. But um, yeah, a lot of recent kits have been a dream to build together and I like that there's enough parts for some different poses if you've got multiple ones in your army. Which, let's face it, a lot of people will. So yeah, the Goth Gothasar Harvester looks really tasty. So next up we've got the second battle line option for the uh, Bone Reapers and the awesome cavalry kit. Now when we first saw these I thought they were kind of the size of Varangard. It looks like the more kind of normal kind of knight size. Um, but yeah, really good. So let's open these up and see what exactly we Yep, looks like it's just normal little cavalry bases that we've got. So not, not huge models as I thought they first word but the battle line and you can have an army of these which is really cool. Have a quick look at the instructions. They seem to have multiple heads that can go together in uh, in multiple ways which is really nice. Just so all your uh, cavalry are distinct. Especially if you've got a lot of them in the army. Really like the standard there. It looks cool. So yeah, they look quite a detailed, uh, big, chunky kit. And they've got three full sprues as well, with all sorts going on. I mean, if you look at the detail of the horses on here, they are very, very nice. Yeah, I I think the Mortec Guard are going to be more efficient, but these look really, really cool. I kind of want to do a fully mounted Bone Reaper force. I think that'd be really ace. Even the weapons and stuff are really cool. Yeah, very much looking forward to putting these together. Um, I think they're going to be fun to paint and I'm looking forward to seeing some of the different colour schemes that the community is going to do. I mean, look at all the different heads and options. Yeah. Yeah, these are really cool. But if you've got a cavalry heavy Bone Reaper force, then you'll want some kind of mounted hero to lead them. And this kit builds uh, Kavalos, the kind of uh, mounted character. It also builds the named character Arch Kavalos Xanthros. 
And again, there's quite a distinct look between the two builds, which is, you know, with some clever sprue work, I imagine. So let's have a nosy in and see what we get in here. Again, can imagine this being on a massive kit. It looks like it's a similar size base to the Achillean King, for kind of scale for that kind of size. And again, yeah, makes the two options of characters. A lot of them will use the same body, and I think it's predominantly the head facing different ways, and then the guy riding it that makes a distinction between the two builds. Um, so again, for for completion stake, I might pick up another one of these to get the, uh, the kind of generic version as well as the main character. Because um, really, this this project for me is just going to be mostly for painting them, but for fun. Though, um, having a look at the book, and if you check out our recent podcast as well, I think there's going to be some really nasty stuff you can do with this book. And I imagine we will see this uh, heavily used competitively, let's say. But yeah, that is a really, really cool kit. Even the guy's glaives and the weapons and stuff. Yeah, these really are cracking kits. So we also got a trio of kind of hero level characters um, with this release as well. And they're all very different and very, very weird. So we've got the Soul Reaper, who's kind of an offensive combat guy with a massive scythe. He looks very, very nice. Sprue looks good. Um, again, all these character models, since the move to a single sprue means they can do some really kind of dynamic models, uh, even compared to some of the old metal stuff that we used to get. So glad to see that we've had a few kind of different characters here for the Bone Reapers. I mean, this guy's really cool, crafting the uh, the construct in front of him. And I think this is a theme that we see across the army where, you know, they, they are building their troops rather than just raising them from the dead. And yeah, definitely, definitely something different than, you know, the Night Haunt or, or your classic lines of skeletons. My favorite guy out of these characters though, oops, is this fella, the Soul Mason. So I think on the podcast, Dave described him as the really lazy guy who has a walking chair to carry him round. You know what? If you can craft a freakish looking walking chair, then all power to you. So let's have a look inside and see what we get. Again, I think it's just a single sprue. It's not a massive kit, but it is a really detailed, really nice frame. Again, on all of these, I think there's lots of potential for conversion if you want to, but even building them stock out of the kit, they do look really, really good. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting this guy built up. He's got quite a few pieces of instructions. He's got a bit of a Slam Mage Priest vibe going on. And I wonder, I wonder if the Slam Mage Priest would fit on this for a Shaish, um, Shaish Lizardman force. That might work, that'd be really cool. But yeah, that is the Soul Mason. With these kits, we also got the Mortet Guard that were available separately in the Feast of Bones box, uh, bundled, and really awesomely, it's a box of 20 as well, so you could do two battle line units out of this box, which is really cool. So if you've seen um, Feast of Bones, you know what to expect here. These are the kind of 25 mil infantry for the Bone Reapers with some really kind of emotive faces and really cool weapons. I think the old skeleton warriors kind of pale in comparison to these guys. Um, I know not everyone's a fan of the look of them, but um, yeah, I really, I really enjoy these guys. The parts um, go together, body in two parts, then you kind of add the weapons and shields, making them a lot easier to build, like the grave guard which is definitely a good thing if you're going to have lots of them in your army. I mean, Bone Reapers really are never going to be a horde army, but uh, anything that makes building spindly skeletons easier is a plus in my. And there we go, the sprues itself. Again, lots of really nice details on the banners. We've got lots and lots of different heads, so you can have lots of unique infantry in the army which is really cool. So you get two of those sprues and two sprues with the bodies and the shields and weapons. 
And again, yeah, these are these are really cool models. For completion, we'll have a quick look at the other kits that came in Feast of Bones as well. So you've got the kind of big ogre-sized guys uh, that build the Storkus and Immortus Guard. Uh, these again are really nice kits with loads and loads of detail. Um, yeah, I think people have some fun putting these guys together. I think I prefer the shield version more, uh, both in rules and looks. But um, yeah, again, for completion of the army, I'll probably build one one unit of each type. Just so we've got the options there, and then they look nice on the shelf, don't they? And then also in the box was Vok Morshin, the Master of the Bone Tie. Now this is a really nice character model. Now he was exclusive to the Feast of Bones box, so if you weren't able to get your hands on that, there might be a little time waiting for this guy to come out separately. But um, yeah, again, some really weird stuff like carrying this kind of gravestone on his back and all the candles and stuff. Plus the little scroll, which again, it might be difficult to make out on here. But there's sculpted detail of the script on there, which is really, really nice touch. So yeah, big fan of uh, this character and again, looking forward to getting him built and get some paint on him. As with a lot of recent releases, uh, we also got some endless spells coming out with this army. Um, which is nice, considering we didn't get some for the Ogres and the um, Cities of Sigmar and Uruk books were missing out as well. It's so nice to see that the Soul Reaper's got some bits and they're really nice. And quite big as well. So yeah, I've not actually opened this box yet. The um, Carrion Bird is massive there. If you look kind of compared to the base size there, it's it's a huge thing. It looks really good. Oh, and all the zombies and bodies and stuff on the floor. Yeah, there's some really nice, some really nice details on these. And again, I think some of this stuff would be really good for kit bashing. Like the little kind of uh, pile on things as well. Yeah, these are really nice. With a quick look over the instructions. You can't imagine these going together in many bits. But, um, yeah. As awesome as ever, they look really good. And finally, to round off the release, we had a scenery kit in the form of the Bone Tithe Nexus. Now, this is essentially where people paying the tithe will deposit their bone matter for the, uh, the Ossiarchs to go and take off and use for their nefarious deeds. And uh, yeah, this looks pretty cool on the battlefield as well. It's got some really nice rules where you've got a choice of four different abilities. So, I'll pop into here and have a look at it. I have heard this is quite a massive thing that will take up a bit of space on the battlefield. I mean, if we look at the size of the main central pillar compared to a miniature I've got on hand, the Red Gobbo, it, yeah, it is going to be a massive piece when it's all built and all the steps going around it. And there's a lot of detail on these steps. Are they both the same sprue? Yeah, so it looks like it's two identical sprues with then some parts to, to add to them. The steps covered in all sorts of grisly bone matter and skulls and stuff. Yeah, that's a really cool kit. Yeah, again, it's a shame that some of the recent armies haven't had the scenery pieces. I would have liked to see them for the uh, Uruks and the Cities of Sigmar. But uh, this and the uh, more pot for the Ogres definitely makes up for it. So that was an or or rapid fire unboxing of the Osseo Bone Reaper range. So if there are any kits that you guys particularly like, please let us know in the comments. If you are collecting a Bone Reaper army, let us know what units you want to have. It's, uh, it's not often we get an entire army released in one week, so it's going to be interesting to see what kind of units people pick. Uh, and yeah, if you've got any painted, definitely share them with us on Twitter, at Sprues and Brews, because I'd love to see them, uh, partially so I can steal some colour schemes for my own ones. But yeah, until next time, we will see you later.